Hello, hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is Angie Tribe Small Business Webinars. Um, and these are basically weekly webinars created to help New Jersey small business owners start, grow, and thrive. I'm your host, Glory Marabru. I'm assistant coordinator here at NJSBC. And for those of you who doesn't know what's NJSBC, we are America's New Jersey Small Business Development Center's network. Um, and we are a statewide program powered by the SBA and partners. And we basically help small businesses and entrepreneurs in New Jersey with three main things. No cost small businesses consulting, training and events starring at zero cost, and exclusive and small business resources. So I'm sure that we have some new people today here. Um, can you, if you please can drop um, a number one in the chat just to make sure that you can hear me well, that everything's great. Please let me know. Wanna make sure that you are, that the audio is awesome. Thank you, Ingrid, Venus, and So I'm gonna go over today's agenda. Uh, we have some headlines for you, which basically are some small businesses news that you might be interested on. This first one, it's about NJEDA uh, that the board approved 9.5 million to support film studio development. I'll be sharing the, the link in the chat for you to take a look um, and, and have more information here. About what is it about? What is it about? And you also have here all the contact information. The second one is that NJEDA, NJEDA extends submission deadlines for the statewide employee ownership program or, or RFI. I'm sorry, can't talk today. Um, we have mentioned this program before, and just letting you know that submission. Can extend it. Um, give it a couple of minutes. Again, here you have information, uh, and the deadline has been extended to Wednesday, April 24, 2024. Here you have all the contacts too. Again, I'll be dropping the link in the chat for those of you who are joining us now. Third headline of the week is that New Jersey Statewide Multicultural Business Expo is coming to Edison. And this is from NJVIA. So those of you who are interested in attending or even participating, you can register right here. And then last but not least is that the upcoming tax credit and fair housing training announcement. You can see here uh, when it's happening and you can also see the cost and register at the link here. Again, I'll be dropping all the links in the chat for you to have and like have more information and um, reach out to the people that you need to reach out and also uh, register on the ones that you wanna attend. So a few things to keep in mind, if you can, I'm seeing some of you having some interactions in the chat, uh, that's great. And we love interactions, we love people and this is all actually a great opportunity for you to network. So feel free to drop all, the inf all your information in the chat so you can meet each other. But please, if you have any questions for us, please type them in the Q&A box so we can address them at the end of the webinar or as we see them. Uh, we are, we wanna make sure that we don't miss them. So the Q&A box, it's, it's the perfect space for that. And then um, I drop in the chat a three minute survey link and I'll be sharing that again for those of you who missed it. Uh, if you can please fill that out so we know how we're doing today. We can receive some feedback and you can also get the webinar resources that we're going to be sharing today. Um, that'll be great. And then just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded and the link is going to be sharing the chat uh, for you to take a look at in the next couple of days. And if you if you like it, you can share it with any friend. You can rewatch it. Um, so without further ado, today we're having Karen All. 
she's an environmentalist and she's also an NJSBDC specialty consultant. Um, she's going to be talking about discovering eco-friendly small businesses success since this is um, Earth Month, April, and we're and and Earth Day is also coming, so we're celebrating that too. Um, so Karen, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you, Glormer. How how is everybody? So happy to be here today. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So we are, yes, we're starting to celebrate uh, Earth Day. Um, but just as a little side note, um, today is also my birthday. So we're having a celebration. Um, <laughs> oh my God, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, it's funny, a lot of people Great. said to me, like, what are you doing this for on your birthday? But um, for me, it's, you know, par being part of, uh, the Small Business Development Center and also doing something proactive for the earth is the way I would want to celebrate my birthday. So um, I'm happy to be here with you and celebrating the earth. And, you know, we can celebrate me a little bit too. <laughs> so, um, so let's get into this presentation. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to talk about, you know, like why, why would you want to be an eco-friendly business? Why would you want to talk about sustainability as it relates to your business, why why is it important in the market right now? Um, and what I want to do is show you what some other small businesses are doing and some people that I have coached recently uh, to be a part of the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry. Now, the business registry, we're going to get into this in detail. Um, this is a joint effort between the New Jersey Small Business Development Center and the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. So we'll talk about, you know, what that registration is all about and how you can get your business registered. And there'll be an action plan for you to put in place so that you can go forward and get the registration and, you know, just uh, be a more eco-friendly business. So let's get into this. And again, you know, with the Q&A, um, we're going to wait till the end. So if you have a question, something pops up, please, you know, write it down, type it up. But I'm just going to go through the presentation first, and then we'll do questions at the end. Okay, so, so why? Why be an eco-friendly business? Well, one of the biggest things is this is from a, uh, a survey that was done from a group called Mintel. And looking at millennials. So millennials are now the largest generational segment in the United States. So they're making, you know, most of the business, the, the buying decisions, right? And 66% of millennials said they would choose a business based on their ethics, based on, you know, what that brand, what that business is doing. And the environment is very high up with millennials. They are, you know, they're they're concerned about the environment. They are the probably the first generation that really was brought up with a lot more education around climate change, around, you know, deforestation and species loss. That's been, you know, the education definitely boomed, you know, in um, the late 90s and early 2000s. So they have a different mindset which I'm very happy about. <laughs> so, um, so they are, they're making these decisions. So that's, that's a, that's a big part of your potential clients, your potential customers care about these things. So the other thing is, so this is from um, the Yale university has the climate change communication program. So every year they send out this huge survey to people all around the country, <clears throat> asking them about specific things about climate change. And right now, th this the last survey that went out in 2023, this was just one of the questions. And as you can see, they take the data and you can see where, how people are thinking in specific regions. And this is New Jersey, as you can see, and the question that I wanted to highlight, it says, um, 
the percentage of adults who think citizens should do more to address global warming. And as you can see, New Jersey is in the 50 to 75 percent agree that we should do something, that they need to do something about global warming, about climate change. And your business could be that something that they're looking to do. So the people are people are concerned. People want to ensure that they're doing something. And if your business can help them, they're gonna they're be they're looking for you. We know that now. So what can we do as a business, you know, to be eco-friendly and to let our customers know that we care about the environment? So what I wanted to do today was to share with you um, three case studies, and these are all New Jersey-based small businesses. And what I helped them just recently coach them through doing their registration for the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry. And what we're going to talk about today is their businesses and how they've integrated sustainability into their business, how they're leveraging sustainability into conversations, and some results to their bottom line from doing this type of work. So I want to start with um, Defiant Hair in Flemington. Um, Defiant is a salon, full-service salon. Um, they're about two years old now. And, you know, this is right from their web page and right from the beginning, right from you get right on their landing page, Defiant Hair is a vibrant women-led hair studio dedicated to inclusivity and sustainability. Boom. People know that this is important to them, that this is something that they are working toward to be a sustainable business. And that is, that's going to attract a certain clientele. They're going to get the people that are their ideal client by just by putting that on their website. And we see more and more of that. If people are declaring, you know, as a business, we care about this. In the salon in particular, so they have, you know, just this picture I love with the plants. You know, you just go in there and you just have a feel that they care about the environment. They care about making things beautiful. And, you know, that just says a lot about, you know, their values as a company. These um, these are a, the, um, the 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 I'm, I'm losing the word. They're used. This is for the hair washing stations. That's what I'm trying to think of. And um, so these go on top of the the faucet, and they're the sprays. You know, for when they wash your hair. The cool thing with these are you can see right here. It says Eco Heads. And I went on their website and checked out what these eco heads were all about and how much water can be saved by using these eco heads. So the eco heads are, um, it basically is aerating the water as it's coming, you know, to, to for, for the hair washing stations. And as the, you know, as it's going through this, the aeration is making the stream you know, uh, more pressure so that, it, you know, when they're washing your hair, you know, it, it's just easier to get the shampoo and the color out and all that fun stuff. Um, but because of how it's designed, it's using less water. So they, they estimate that you will save 65% of if you just had a normal, you know, uh, spray for washing hair. So that's huge. And this was something that the owners found because they were talking to other salons. <clears throat> they were talking to, you know, their industry to figure out like wh what could they do for the environment. And what they also found was salons have this thing called green circle salons and they can register to be a green circle salon. But what being a part of this type of industry group, it basically gives you solutions for 
all the different waste streams that come out of a salon. So like this, this container right here with the green circle on it, that's where all of the hair goes. The hair from the salon goes to a company that makes oil absorbents. So when there's an oil spill, they use human hair to help collect the oil from what oil in the ocean. So it's so these absorbent pads are made out of human hair. And then they have, you know, they have solutions for the tubes that the color comes in and all these things. And these are all things that like Defiant didn't have to figure this out. They just went to their, um, they talked to other salons, they talked to, they went to conferences and figured out like the salon industry, what solutions are available already. So they didn't have to reinvent the wheel to be a green business. So this is like one of the big things to figure out like what, you know, what is available to you as a business owner from your professional organizations. There's a lot of sustainability, you know, the environment, it's not going away. The EPA just <clears throat> this week put out new regulations around drinking water. So the, it's getting more, businesses are getting more and more uh, regulated, but it's also, we are, we need to do more for the environment, you know, just as a, as a society. So you'll see there are solutions now from your professional organizations. So definitely do some, you know, you don't have to figure this out all by yourself, reach out and see where people, you know, where there's some solutions for you. And speaking of that, that kind of goes right into the other business, another one I want to talk about. So this is um, IFA Fit. Um, IFA is, uh, is the owner, and that's him right there with a horse. And what he does is he is a fitness professional, um, but he works specifically with equestrians. So he helps them develop a training program that will make them, you know, strong and limber, limber and be able to perform at a higher level um, with their horses. And, you know, it's a very niche business, which, uh, you know, is, is amazing that he, you know, he came up with this business and his story online, if you go to his about page, it's really very interesting and in how this whole thing came about for him. And he just happens to love horses. He loves the environment. Perfect fit for him. So IFA, what, you know, when, again, partnering, what he does is he goes to a lot of events. He goes to these equestrian shows and he'll have a table and he's, you know, telling people about like what he can do to help them with being, you know, fitness and how that, you know, he has specific ways to work out that's going to help you be a better rider, right? So he's partnered with this group called Green is the New Blue. And they are, again, very, very specific that they're, what they're doing is they're trying to ensure that these events that are, you know, these equestrian events have a less of an environmental impact, right? We've all gone to conferences and gone to you know, outside events like this and what happens, you know, there's a lot of garbage, there's a lot of waste involved. So this group is helping to green up these events. So IFA found these, these people and said, you know, hey, I want to be involved. I want to, um, you know, how do I green up what I'm doing? And being a part of this has also brought him some more opportunities to go to different shows. So Again, when we partner with like-minded groups, we have the same values. We're trying to, you know, we're, we have the same goals. That's when, you know, other opportunities can, can come for us as a business owner. So that was something that IFA was able to, um, to leverage. This is right from his application to the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry. And so when you go through, and we're going to go through the registry in a little bit, but transportation is one of the things that you can make 
you know, you can demonstrate how your business is, um, you know, is working towards, you know, being environmentally friendly. So what he was able to do, so IFA has an app and the, um, the app has, um, you know, your fitness routine on it. He also has, you know, we'll do video um, training instead of going to someone's, you know, someone's farm, someone's barn to do the training. So just by reducing his travel two days, which was 102 miles for him round trip to Flemington and back. This was the cost savings for month. It was $532. And for the year, $6,413 is what he saved. And when he did, like, it was, it was important to him, you know, to be off the road and to, you know, for the environment, but this now is saving his time and it's saving him money by doing this change to his business. So a lot of our, when we look at environmental or sustainable um, solutions, there a lot of times there there is a great there's a there's a return on investment as we like to say. So for this, it's some money, it's some gas, it's some it's carbon going into the air from driving. Uh, lots of things just by cutting two travel days for his business. So this was a really great, um, and this is just kind of how you put your information into the New Jersey um, business registry. It's it's very simple, couple sentences to explain, you know, how you are making your pledge um, into the registry. So the next business I want to talk about is uh, Propagate Studio. So Propagate Studio is a art space in Stewartsville, New Jersey. Um, they have classes, they host events. It's a, um, it's a community studio. And again, this is right from their website down here in the mission. And you see, we believe in respect for each other, our planet and ourselves. And that's the owner, Sam, here in the picture. Um, who likes to, you know, let people know that they can do hard things, which is, which I love. So, so what Sam has done, so Sam has an art studio and a lot of times people will just say, Hey, um, you know, can you use this? I don't have this, you know, I, I took up watercolor and I'm not liking it. And, you know, um, I have all this stuff, you know, or I have all this yarn. I know my mom, my mom was a big uh, crocheter. And when she passed away, we had so much yarn. And I was like, I didn't know what to do with it. And Sam has come up with this model, which I think is just fabulous, which is called the Art Supply Thrift Shop. So people can come to her studio and all these things that are donated, all these unwanted art supplies, that you know probably would end up in a landfill. All of that material now is collected. It's donated, it's collected. And then Sam has a take what you'll use, pay what you can model. So here it's also making art accessible to really anyone, you know, who, who wants to, to create. And it just, you know, again, we're, we're, diverting all this stuff from the landfill and ensuring that it's going somewhere. And like this, this is example, like here's an acrylic paint kit <laughs> that was donated to the studio. Um, someone didn't want it anymore. And we all know, like, like I said, those things sit in the corner and then you end up throwing it in the trash. So Sam created this really win-win benefit for the community and then also for you know diverting waste um there was one event that she did where it was uh, we weighed everything that came from this event and 360 plus pounds of waste which would have been waste was don't was donated and went to was rehomed if you will you know so this is again these were, this was, this, these supplies were coming to Sam and she was like, okay, 
I don't know what to do with most of this stuff. I, you know, and she uses what she can in her business, but this is a win-win for the community and for the environment. So I just love this. And so let's kind of like unpack these three, these three case studies, if you will. So number one is stories are powerful. And, you know, just those mission statements that you saw, you know, defiant, you know, how they had on their website and Sam had on her website for Propagate Studio, sharing your story, letting your customers, letting them know that you care is a really powerful for your business. You know, think back to those first couple slides, those millennials, those people that are care about like, you know, I should be doing something about climate change, but I don't know what to do. You sharing your story can really help support your values. And then also, you know, it supports your business. So that's what we're, you know, one of the things Just don't be, people sometimes are afraid, you know, to share their authentic self, share their heart. Uh, but that's really what I found working in the environmental field for over 30 years now, when we share these stories, when we share the heart connection, that's really when change happens. And your customers, you know, you may have made some environmental decisions in your business, which maybe makes you a little bit more expensive than your competition. But sharing that value, sharing those stories, that's where you can you can change the minds too of your customers and the consumers. Um, remember to leverage your professional organizations for solutions. There's so many things that are happening out there. You don't have to have all the answers. So go to your professional organizations and see what they have for sustainability. And then coming to us, coming to the Small Business Development Center, we can also help you with some solutions. And then, as I said, we partner with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, their sustainability group. They also have consultants that can help you with how to implement sustainability practices into your, your business. And you know, just the thing here that I want you to know is you don't have to figure all this out yourself. There's a lot, a lot of resources out there to help you. And partnering with like-minded businesses and organizations, you know, we, we all sometimes get so busy that we feel like we have to do it alone. And we feel like, you know, we, we have to, there's more competition, you know, or, or less revenue if I partner with someone and that sometimes, yeah, it's, it could happen. It could be the, it could, it's something that, you know, you have to do the math, right? <laughs> but what I find is the energy when you're working with a like-minded business and organization, that's really where the energy happens and we can really make change for the environment and for, you know, for implementing sustainability practices. So think about like, IFA working with the, the event group, right? If he hadn't reached out to them, there's some events that he might not have known about that. And he could leverage, you know, working with them to get his business in front of other organizations. Environmental savings too, many times it will equal equals bottom line savings for you. So, when you are saving energy, reducing water, reduce, reducing waste, you know, look at what your what's coming in as raw material for your business and what's going out as waste. Just looking at waste minimization means maybe you can then purchase less raw materials. That's going to affect your bottom line. So Doing those types of savings, calculating those savings really goes a long way, it, especially if you have employees, for them to know and understand why you're making some of these decisions is it helps to then get people on board, gets people to 
you know, to, to be an adopter, right? So if you want to figure out what those savings are, how do you figure out that return on investment? Again, that's something we can help you with, with counseling. And also, you know, be creative. You know, look at the example from Propagate Studio. You know, this, this materials were coming, you know, in and Sam was like, okay, what can I do? What can I, you know, this, I want to take this material so it's diverted from the landfill and how do I get it out to the people? Um, and, you know, that pay what you can model, again, is serving so many people. And I think it's just a great, great way. Um, I really, truly believe that, you know, a win for the environment is usually a win for our bottom line is for people. The, you know, when the sustainability movement was created, it was called the triple bottom line. It was people, planet, and profit. And really, we want to look at that and see how, you know, what we're doing, you know, how does it affect people, planet, and profit? And I just love that. So be creative. So I want to share with you, so what the, the three businesses that I just mentioned are either have, have submitted their application or they are in the process of registering for the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry. And what I want to do is I want to jump in there and show you the website so you can see what it would be like to do a registry. And I think I need to stop sharing so that I get the right screen up here. Okay. So this is the registry and sorry about that. Um, this is what the registry looks like. And what you'll see here is some, we've got everything here to get you registered. What I love and what I really recommend you do if you're interested in registering is you go start here, go to the registered businesses. And if you click on here, it's gonna show you the businesses that have already um, got the registration. So if you are a, let's say you're a brewery, so Lone Eagle Brewery. So they're right near me, near Flemington, and it shows what, what did they commit to in the registry? So you can benchmark some other businesses. And when you go, when you register, so there's a, there's a form you'll go through when you register. Um, but here, if we can look at the resources, and these are the topics that you can pick from when you do your registration. And you're going to pick, um, you're gonna pick five areas where you wanna make a pledge um, there's some things that are, you know, maybe not specifically, like if you don't own a building, this may not apply to you, but there's things like community involvement. So I'm working with a business right now who does a lot of work with Habitat for Humanity. So that will be in the community section. Um, IFA, for example, was going to put down promotional tools because he does so many different, um, it's different events, right? He'll go to um, all these different horse shows and, you know, how does he promote his business? So going through this exercise, he decided there were some things that he was still handing out information. And he decided that he was going to get a, you know, a stand made for his table with a QR code. So then people could then just get his information that way. So it's a great way as you go through these specific areas you know, see where, you know, you can, you know, what topics are resonating, what you're already doing. Um, so there's, again, a whole bunch of different topics. We can help you pick things. 
Emergency preparedness is one that's I find a lot of companies, especially a lot of small businesses, have a lot of maybe unwritten practices around emergencies. You know, you might have a a, a, a text chain, um, you know, for snow days, or you might have, you know, when you close the shop, somebody has to to check in and make sure that you know everyone's safe for the day. But we, you know, you're not taking credit for something like that. So, but this is where you could put something for emergency preparedness. Um, so it's not just, you know, people think of environment, they think of waste, they think of energy, water. You know, it's this this registry encompasses a lot of different things. When you're looking about sustainability of a business, you know, it's it's yes, it's about the environment, but being a sustainable sustainable business, you know, there's a lot, a lot, you know, other things to it. So. We wanted to make sure that there's some things for everybody, really. So that's really where um, the resources page, like this is where you will, you know, those calculations that I showed you that IFA did, you can get some information here. Again, this is the registered businesses. So to go out and do that benchmarking and, you know, see what, you know, what information is already out there. Um, and again, here's where you can click for consulting, um, but we'll talk about how you can, e another easy way to get the no cost consulting to be registered, um, you know, help you through the registration process. But um, once you're registered, there's a lot of other information for you. Um, we have resources on like a social media kit. So what do you do with, okay, now I've gotten this, this certification, how do I how do I leverage it for my business? Um, so we can we'll give you some resources there as well. So it's I really recommend you know you just click around here and you know see what number one you're already doing, and number two you know if you want to okay I, I'm I'm making more of a commitment to environmental. I want to be more sustainable how you can, you know, up your game, you know, we can definitely help you um, with that. So let me stop sharing this and we'll get back into the presentation. Okay. So if you're interested in becoming a certified business, here's, here's, a, here's some, an action plan. Here's the steps that you can take to get certified. So, or get registered, I should say. So number one, you know, look at the things that, gets, like I said, what you're already doing. Are you doing some green purchasing? Are you buying like just something simple as photocopy paper? Are you buying a percent that's recycled? That's something you can take credit for. Um, if, you, if you have a recycling program at your business, take some, some credit for that. And what are you doing? Maybe you have some energy saving things in place already. You know, um, if you have like a light detection so you have motion sensors on your lights. If you have um, a specific type of, like there's those, um, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? The, the um, oh my gosh, I, must, I just lost the thing. It's, uh, so if you're, you're plugging in multiple, <laughs> multiple pieces of equipment, there's a, um, your cords that you use. I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of, um, but they have like sensors on them. So if they're, they're, they're basically what you're trying to do is make sure that things aren't drawing energy when you're not using them, right? Um, I'll, I'll put, I'll remember it and I'll put it in the chat what that thing's called. <laughs> but those are energy saving things that we just start using and you forget, you know, oh yeah, I am doing that. So take credit for the things that you're already doing. You know, and then definitely go to your professional organizations based on your business. You know, like what are you doing? Um, power strips. That's the word I was trying to think of. Um, <laughs> um, so go to your professional organizations. They're very simple. Um, they're, they're simple 
things that you can do with your professional organizations with just like you're doing today. Go to a webinar and see what you need to, you know, what you could be doing for your business. If you own a building, there are new regulations that are out now about your heating and cooling systems. So if you have refrigerant that you use and it's over a certain amount of pounds within the equipment, you have to register with the state and you have to report on how much refrigerant you use at your facility, if there were any leaks, if you added any refrigerant. Um, and this, this is all part of a larger um, requirement that's coming for reporting what we call greenhouse gas emissions. Let's say, for example, you are a small business that is like a, a grocery store, a convenience store, and you have refrigeration units. These regulations could apply to your business. If you go to your associations, so it could be like your grocery associations, your there's there's refri there's a uh, associations that are just around like refrigeration. They will have information on how do you calculate this? How do you get the information? You may have a service that comes in and services your refrigeration equipment. How do you get that information to do these reports? Um, and again, we can help you through the Small Business Development Center, but also the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, who we've partnered with for this, uh, for the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry, their sustainability group will help you with those types of questions. But definitely, you know, your professional organizations are are such a great, great tool so that you don't have to figure this out all by yourself. You know, um, and that's really why we, as the Small Business, Business Development Center, you know, are a thing. You know, we're here to help you with these business solutions. So please reach out, you know, Google a little bit, <laughs> get your questions. Like, that's why I like, you know, I use Google to, you know, and even AI, you know, get those questions figured out is a great way to spend your time, but don't go down the rabbit hole of figuring out every single solution. Cause I guarantee you there's somebody who can give you that answer pretty quick. So definitely search your professional associations. Then, like I said, go to that website, go to the New Jersey Sustainable Business Registry, benchmark what other businesses like yours are doing, review those categories, review the topics and see what you think, you know, you'd be, you'd want to, to pledge that you're going to do as part as the registry. And if you have any questions as you're going through that, and you'd like some coaching, you'd like some help, you'd like, you know, the, what I did for Defiant, for IFA Fit and for Propagate Studio, you know, you can set up a coaching call um, with me through Megan at the uh, Fairleigh Dickinson Small Business Development Center. Um, when you're going through the registry, uh, you, you know, just, again, start with those businesses, benchmark what other people are doing, and you're going to find that the registry is something that you can do for a business. When you do register, you know, we're going to, like I said, we have a social media kit. If you are a brick and mortar, if you have a business, we're going to give you a little cling to put in your window so that people will know that you are a New Jersey sustainable business and that, you know, you are committed to helping New Jersey, you know, live up to its name as the garden state. We have a goal this year. So the Small Business Development Center and the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, we want to certify 250 businesses this year. So we're hoping that some of you that are online today will want to take up the call and join us and register your business and pledge, you know, that you care about this planet as well. So I know I went through that fast and I really wanted to go through the content so that we could get to some specific questions about your business. So again, I'll leave this up here for just a second so that you can get Megan's information. Um, we are gonna share this slide deck with you as well so that all the links and everything are there. Um, but 
we can open it up to, uh, I'll give you a minute to get those questions into the Q&A. Yeah, if you can leave your uh, the presentation up, that'll be great just in case we get any questions for, uh, for that. Sure. And uh, just reminding everyone that you can drop your questions in the Q&A chat. We're going to be answering them now. We do have a question about the health category for the registry website that you share. Seems like they can find it or if there's no category. For health. So give me a, like, um, I need a little more information of like what you're looking for. Um, it's an anonymous thought for whoever wrote that question. That would be great if we, you can give us a little bit more information. Seems like we're, we don't have any more questions, so I'll be waiting for that answer. And again, if anyone has any other questions, you can drop them in the Q&A box. In the meantime, while we wait for that information, I'll be dropping in the chat the links to survey so you can get the presentation and I'll also drop the link for the webinar recording that will be available in the next two or three business days. And I'll also drop in the chat the link for you to request counseling. So you can um, either meet with Karen or also any other consultant from the SBC. And just a reminder that the SBC is throughout New Jersey. So you may want to go to njsbdc.com to make sure that you find your local SBC. Um, so we got a question from Billy that says, I'm not sure if I missed it. Nevertheless, is there a registration cost? cost? Um, no, this is a, a free, uh, free program for, for your business. So yeah, so you just have to submit the application online. And just to kind of like get back to the health question. So a lot of things like, um, I, you know, just pulling up the, the topics here, like some of the things like um, when you look at the certification uh, programs, when underneath like industry specific, it could fit. Um, also under when we're talking about management and leadership, there is um, there's some things there that could be related to health. So like, for example, like when I think about sustainability and health, like uh, if you have a like a business, let's say that helps with communities where, you know, we know that like asthma is, is hot is you know, the asthma rates or if the air quality isn't good, you know, asthma rates go up. So something like that around health could fit into the management and leadership uh, category for sure when you're doing the registration. Great. Thank you. Um, Got another question that says, are there grants in New Jersey available for those who qualify for this registration? Uh, no specific grants at the moment. Um, however, you know, we're always looking to, like when we get more people to register for the, you know, go through this process, what we do is like, we can good then bring this information to our legislation and say, okay, you know, our businesses are committed to sustainability. So we need to get some grants around that. So this is one of the ways that we can show our legislation that there is interest and that businesses are committed to sustainability. Great. Um, can you please share the, uh, the website, the link for the registry? Sure. That'll be great. Correct. You know what? I'll go back to this slide. So write this down here, registry.njsbdc.com. I will put that in the chat as well.
perfect. So again, this is a- uh, We got um, another question for the healthcare industry. Sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so we got another question for the healthcare industry that says that this industry generates a lot, lots of waste. And I'm wondering how it fits into the sustainability registration. Yes, oh, absolutely. So from, there's lots of things that are happening with healthcare and a lot of, um, so that would be like, if you're, if you're a, um, like a clinic, let's say dentist office, maybe something like that, you know, you can look under waste. What I would really recommend if you are, um, if your business is generating a lot of waste, there are many of the companies are now that where you get your products from have solutions, have take back um, programs. So there may be some, so like, let's say, for example, you know, you uh, buy a product from Johnson and Johnson, you know, go to their website and see what they can do for you as a customer. Um, it's not really that uh, prevalent here in the United States yet, but in Europe, um, there are many, many regulations that are coming about take back and about that there has to be a solution for the waste that's generated. So like I know, for example, um, the electronics, you know, uh, so we can just take like an iPhone, for example, you know, uh, we don't have the regulations in the United States like they do in Europe. So there's like, if you had, a, if you bought an iPhone, you would know exactly what to do with that iPhone, you know, in uh, other countries. Like it, it's, it's part of the, what, you know, part of the whole circular loop of, you know, where we're trying to, what they call a circular economy. So the people that are producing the, the products that generate waste, they have to know what to do and it not just be the consumer or the, you know, the, the customer that has to figure out what to do with the waste. So definitely, you know, push back, um, go to your supplier websites. Um, there is a really good, um, really interesting company in New Jersey called TerraCycle. And TerraCycle has a lot of industry specific recycling um, outlets. So they can help you with like, you basically buy a box, and fill your box and they will take it and sort it and you know do what needs to be done. If you're talking about an in healthcare industry, a lot of things with medical waste regulations so that you know things uh, if it's if it's medical contaminated biological waste, there are some specific things that you need to do. Um, and that's you know if you have questions about that, that's something um, I can help with, but also you can reach out to our sustainability partners at the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. But it is a big issue within the healthcare industry. Um, you know, a lot of what we call like a, a sutures, let's say. So, you know, comes in several layers of packaging because it has to be sterile. And how do we deal with that? How do we make sure that the customer, you know, the end product, the, the hospital, the, the clinic is not stuck with all this waste. So it is a big issue. Definitely. Um, we got a really important question that says, my business is her headquarter in Camden County. However, the sustainability register is at, uh, registry is at FDU. I think that's okay. Um, so you can, so we're, you know, uh, the consulting that I do is really throughout New Jersey. So um, I'm just, you know, with part of that organization. So being a specialty consultant, it doesn't matter what county you are in, you can just, you know, ask for me and I can help you with the sustainable business registry. Great. Thank you. Karen, I don't think we have more questions. Just leave a few seconds um, to make sure that we address them all. If not, feel free to let us know that we didn't 
answer your question, but I'll be sharing my screen in the meantime. Uh, Victoria says, great, thank you. And I'll be requesting consulate. So awesome. Looking forward to it, Victoria. Yeah, and again, if you know it, and, and you know, if you know of other businesses, um, again, we're, we're really excited. We're hoping to get the 250 people, new registrations this year. So uh, please help us with that goal. We really, uh, I'm very excited about this new, well, it's been around for a while, but we're really putting some new energy around it this year with this registration. So um, it's important. Like I said before, you know, let's let's keep our namesake as the Garden State. Uh, you know, we we need to make that commitment to, you know, to our planet and you know, especially to our state. I I like the vibes here. Someone said thank you for your time. We'll be one of those two hundred and fifty. Yay. Oh. <laughs> That's, That's a good birthday oh. present for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, everyone. I think we don't have any more questions. Just want to remind you that you can request no cost counseling here. You just have to uh, put your camera in front of this QR, QR code, and then you can just fill out the information and request counseling. Uh, just a reminder that for upcoming our upcoming webinars, we have next Tuesday, Vanessa Schwartz. She's also an NGSBC consultant and she's going to be um, walking us through the process of starting right with New Jersey business registration um, using our resources at, as NGSBC. And just again, reminding you that we're here to help you. We have resources like small businesses consulting training and events starting at zero cost and also exclusive small business resources again i'll uh, leave this up for a few seconds so you can point your camera and tap the link that it's going to be open right there and uh karen thank you so much for joining us today and have a great birthday i hope you have a blast i will thank you so much well, everyone, thank you for joining us today. See you next week. Take care. Bye. bye.